Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, listen, listen up. As a person that was on the flotilla, a flotilla that was organized by people that we have right here that have been a part of the Free Gaza movement for the last two years, I want to say as a person that was on that flotilla that what was done by the Israeli military was uh, was a crime. Uh, the, the, uh, piracy on international waters of six vessels, the kidnapping of people, the murder of nine people to include an American citizen, the wounding of 50 people on board that, taking us, kidnapping us, taking us to a place that we did not want to go, which was the state of Israel, holding us for 48 hours, taking all of our possessions to include all of our computers, cameras, everything else. It's a criminal act and what you represent the Sherman is doing is saying we're the criminals is wrong. And we are the ones that are here to protest what he is doing, which is jeopardizing the national security of the United States by saying that no members of the, the parliaments of European countries that were on those boats should ever be allowed to come to the United States. So my name is Ramzi Kaisia. I'm one of the organizers of the Free Gaza Movement. I've worked for them for the last two years, uh, working on every single mission. And I rode in on uh, two of the ships in October and November of 2008. According to Representative Sherman, that makes me a terrorist. I am here to express my outrage at Representative Sherman's uh, remarks and to offer myself up voluntarily for arrest should he choose to, to make the statement. This cannot be allowed to stand. The United States of America cannot be allowed to be a place where humanitarian aid workers and human rights workers have to fear from their government simply for trying to take aid to people in need or to stand against those brutal policies that are impoverishing them in the first place. It is absolutely outrageous. It is a violation of everything that we should stand for in this country. And I demand that Representative Sherman immediately apologize to all of us and to the family members of those who were killed. Folks, the I will say it again. You're blocking the door. <laughs> There are no circumstances whatsoever under which ordinary citizens should feel that you need to intimidated. Pardon me, I'm walking through. Thank you. You guys are blocking the office here. This is a member of Congress's office here. You guys need to move down further down the hallway. Turn around and move down the hallway. Well, yes. Representative Sherman's um, assistant, he's on the floor right now. 
Um, and it's unable to talk with us, so that we can get them more to do it with the Nebraska Hills. So what we've also decided to do is do a memorial to the people that were killed on the mob in Andra. So this is actually from the Free Gaza. It's a state of public statement that we've made. The Freedom Club Silla lost nine members of our beloved community on the Mavi Marmara. Their sacrifice is one of the reasons that we have the courage and conviction to come out here today. We do not want them to be forgotten. Their efforts to be ignored, or even worse, vilified. We don't want that. In the dark early hours of May 31st, Israel launched a commando and Navy attack on six unarmed civilian ships carrying humanitarian aid in the international waters of the Mediterranean Sea, opening fire before they landed. We in the Free Gaza Movement would like to offer our deepest sympathy to the people of Turkey, and particularly to the nine families who have lost loved ones. Twenty-eight have lost their families due to the Israeli attack on the Mavi Marmara. Based on preliminary autopsy reports, two men were shot four times each, and five others were either shot in the back of the head or the back. According to several eyewitnesses, one victim was a photojournalist who was shot in the head as he was videotaping the assault. That was who Ann mentioned. Ibrahim Hogan was 60 years old. He was a politician and electrical engineer. He was shot four times in the temple, chest, hip, and back. Furkan Dogan, a 19-year-old American. Furkan was in his senior year in high school and waiting for the results of his university entrance exam. The school he attended was a very prestigious school who um, specialized in science. He had hoped to become a doctor and loved chess. Jangeev Akiyu, he was 41, married, and he leaves behind three children. <laughs> Jenji, Jadat Kilashar, he was the photojournalist who was killed as he was holding the video camera. He was the lead behind a wife and two children. Jenji Akshinolo, a former amateur soccer player and coach for Turkey's Taekwondo team. His wife was aboard the Marmara and she survived. She has said that she will go on future futility. Chenru was 55. I want to hold that one. I know, I know uh, this, the wife of this gentleman. She and I had a lengthy conversation a day before he was killed. This is Nesjet Gilladrum. He was an, actually an IHH aid worker. He has a wife and a three-year-old daughter named Melody. This is Fakhri Yeldin. He was a 44-year-old firefighter. He leaves behind a wife and four sons. This is Ali Haider Bengi. He got his degree in Arab literature from the University of El Azhar and runs a telephone repair shop. He leaves behind a wife and four children. The youngest are twins who are five years old. This is Genjit Songar. He was 47 and he leaves behind a wife, six daughters, and one son. Now as I said, these people have sacrificed their lives to help the people of Gaza. So we feel quite comfortable in being here today and talking to Representative Sherman because the sacrifice that he has made is nothing compared to what these gentlemen.